they catch me hollering at the moon What's up guys, I'm here with Gavin and this is his 2018 Toyota 4Runner. So he's gonna go ahead and tell you guys everything about the car and just give you guys a good overview on it. Obviously this is my 2018 4Runner. It's the TRD off-road package. There's, it comes with transfer case, locking differentials, all that lot. And I've, um, I've done some cosmetic upgrades, nothing too major about it, but I wanna get it lifted and all that. But yeah, I've gone with the uh, Cali Rays light bar and our Prinsu roof rack and TRD upgra upgraded TRD grill. Yeah, so the grill looks super cool because it's got those orange lights there. And then also just the way the headlights work on this car, it just all fits together and looks really good. Mm -hmm. I just think the front end of these 4Runners is so aggressive. It also helps with the Raptor lights too. It yeah, really yeah. brought out a beefier look to the car. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then what, what, what wheels are these? Um, these are KMC Rockstar 3s. They're a beadlock wheel, so they're not really meant for off-road, but they're a three-piece wheel, essentially. So that's a, a true beadlock, right? A, not, not really. It would be, um, complete, there would be bolts all around the oh, outside. okay, okay. Yeah. But it looks super cool, especially with like the meaty tire setup. It gives it like a really off-road appearance, mm -hmm. which I think looks absolutely amazing. And then also with this red, what color is this red? Oh, uh, this is Barcelona red. Yeah, so this Barcelona red just fits really well with the entire build that he's going for. And then you plan on lifting it, right? Yep. Planning on doing a, I think it's a two and a half in the front and three and a half in the rear. Oh, that's going to look so good. And then widening the stance a little bit. It'll actually have a massive presence on the road if it does yeah just like the forerunner even in stock form just has this presence that not a lot of cars have and just like this really aggressive looking it almost looks like a truck but it's yeah. not which is a cool thing about it and then obviously once you do the tires like a light bar some new uh lighting in the front it just really transforms the look of the car yeah. but what got you into cars um ever since uh, there's a story of my parents back when i was like two or three going down the road and apparently i was like naming every single like manufacturer that went by and then just have i've just been into them ever since like cars maybe really got in, me into them like I, miatas that's all i really wanted and yeah and then i got a mini as my first car and haven't really stopped buying stuff for them since so you had a mini before and then you decided to get a forerunner so out of all the cars out there what made you want to get a forerunner um well Going into college, I needed something more reliable. And the Mini, as much as I love that car, it blew up on me three times. And I just couldn't afford to keep buying parts for it to, just for it to blow up again. Yeah. So I decided to sell it and then get this. Yeah, so that's another cool thing about this car is that it's very reliable. Obviously it's a Toyota, so it's pretty difficult to beat it up. So it's a really good car for daily driving. And then if you want to take it on some trails or beat it up, you really can. And it's really going to be good for all of that. And it'll last me like 500,000 miles too. Which oh yeah, you perfect. How, so how many miles are on it right now? 59, almost, actually I think I hit 60,000 today. Oh wow, so 60,000 miles and the car is pretty much brand new. Like you yeah. wouldn't be able to tell, so it's pretty cool. So moving on to the rear of the car, it's really interesting because Gavin has a couple things he's done to the rear as well. So go ahead and mention that. Yeah, coming from the rear of the car, second mod I actually ever did was instead of going for like a lift or bigger tires, I went for a Magnaflow exhaust. It's a cat back, but I mean, it's not too loud, but it's, it's loud enough. So it's it, enough to probably just give it a nicer tone without being just overly excessive. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be like, sports car like bmw loud it's a forerunner you don't need for it to be extremely loud but it gives it a, like a really nice tone so what else is different about your forerunner because it is the facelift model so go ahead and mention that as well yep as you mentioned i have the facelift and what they, the overall design stayed the same but they changed the taillights headlights and i believe the front bumper on the car but um the one thing they May, they've kept the same and forerunners since maybe the early 90s if the window will roll down and that's my favorite feature on this car yeah it's a pretty cool feature about forerunners is that so you don't have to actually open the back you can just literally roll the window down which not a lot of cars can do that but it's a pretty cool unique feature to the forerunner 
And then also with the updated version, you get the new tail lights. So it just looks really good overall. So that's really it. It's a really cool car, but let's go ahead and drive the car and see how it feels. So now it's my turn to drive the car. And keep in mind, I'm not really into big cars. I've always had small cars. So, you know, the biggest car I've ever owned was really the Camry. And now I drive the 8.6, which is really nimble and small car. So it's going to be really interesting to drive a big car like this. So let's go ahead and take it for a quick drive here and see how it feels. So right off the bat, really smooth. I'm liking that. And acceleration wise, it also feels really good. You got to put a little more throttle into it than like <laughs> other cars but once you get used to it it's not too difficult yeah yeah so i mean obviously with a big car you're gonna need more throttle to get it going but i'm not expecting it to be too quick but we'll see just driving it here though it feels really good on these roads like <laughs> i'm just used to my car that's like so stiff but overall it's very nice yeah so just as like a daily driver i think this would be really nice because you know, it's a big car, it can hold a lot, but it also has a really cool presence on it. So just driving down the street, it just looks so aggressive. And especially with this light bar that you put on there, mm -hmm. I think it's gonna look so cool. So even though it's a big car, let's go ahead and do a full throttle pull and just see how it feels. So just pulling out onto the road and then I'm gonna get it straight and just hit it. big SUV it moves yeah I mean it almost sounds supercharged which is awesome I mean the sound is just it reminds me a lot of the Camry V6 which it's a very similar engine right yeah it's um, the engine's code is 1 GRFE which is um, a, it's a bigger bore engine than the Camry was which is I think a 2 GR yeah, it's a 2 GRFE which you know, it's interesting. It is a four liter, so it's a little bit bigger, but the sound is similar. And then I guess just from being a, a bigger engine, it has more of a whine to it, which sounds mm -hmm. awesome and almost supercharged, but not really, but it definitely is cool. When we turned, it upshifted in the second for a little bit. And then when you floored it, it downshifted back to first. So there was a bit of a lag, but I mean, it's some, it's, so, well, what? that's just with the automatic, you know, yeah. it's, just, it's downshifting for you. It's, but. it's also what you'd expect from a big SUV like this one. So definitely the transmission is interesting because it's not tuned for performance. It's tuned for comfort. So it's going to shift very, I guess I could say lazy, but it definitely doesn't feel lazy. It's just very smooth and it's just, that's the whole point of it. It's a good daily driver and it feels smooth and that's what you want out of it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a sluggish transmission if I'm being honest. It's a good old torque converter that they've been using since the early 2000s yeah and um i mean but it's not meant to be instantaneous shifts like a porsche pdk is. oh yeah for sure for sure but honestly in a pinch if you need it to downshift it's gonna do it it knows what you want definitely not like a sports car but it's still it still keeps up and it does a good job yeah so what kind of gas mileage do you typically get with this well um normally i get like 14 and a half to maybe 16 but because we were um because when we were doing filming earlier and um we had the engine running for so long i'm currently getting 13.7 <laughs> 13 13.7 so what's the liter on this engine four liter it's yeah, so a it's, big bore v6 yeah so it's a four liter v6 it doesn't get the best gas mileage and four runners are kind of known for that you know typically they don't have the best but it is a big car so it takes a lot to get it going but you know yeah no four four runners there's a there's a saying in the community it's like when someone asks about gas mileage for the car everyone's like it gets around 13 but who cares it's a four runner it's not meant to not meant to get good gas mileage it's just meant to be a good trail car yeah and it almost seems like it gets to a threshold to where it's like the gas mileage is just like so bad that you just give up and you're like you just enjoy the ride you forget about stuff like that yeah i mean I, but when you're daily driving it like through downtown um it it bites you in the butt eventually like you can't there's been times where i haven't been able to get 300 miles on a tank but at the same time you can go on a road trip in it and to set the cruise control at like 65, 70, the, like down the highway, and it'll get like 19 mpg on the highway. And that makes it around 350, close to 400 miles on a tank of gas, which is... I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's not the best, but it's definitely up there. Yeah, I mean, 
But I'm sure it has a huge tank too for, you know, because it's a huge car. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's a 23 gallon tank. Tires are a bit bigger than the stock. They are 285s if I remember correctly, but they're... Um, they sounds are, pretty good. It sounds really good. This does too. Yeah. But um, they're 285 stock. It came with 265s. Now they're really big and it doesn't help that I have an upgraded roof rack and light bar on the top and so it really really affects the gas mileage like completely stock I think I'd be seeing around 16 yeah for sure for sure so tell us about this light bar you have on the car um so I got the Cali raised 42 inch light bar and it is in my opinion it's easily one of the best light bars out there like it is it, it's basically the sun and when you're when you're lighting it up at night like it feels like you can light up an entire county with it oh my gosh with that with, <laughs> that's funny to say that it literally is like a sun yeah i mean it, it is bright and it's impressive what for what what it can do so let's go ahead and stop here and we can right. do a full throttle acceleration let's see. So I definitely wasn't expecting that launch. Like that really, the initial bite puts you in your seat. It does, but it doesn't help that it has long gears and a um, older older transmission. Like this engine and transmission combination have been in the Forerunner since early 2000s, since the fourth generation. But I feel like if it had an upgraded gearbox, it would have much shorter ratios I could actually get a quicker zero to 60 time. So what speed transmission is this? It is a five speed automatic. I think Toyota has done a good job with this car and it obviously shows they've sold 150,000, they sell 150,000 a year and it's been out for 11 years. So that's close <laughs> to a million. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. So, you know, having a car out for 11 years, a lot of people could look at it in a bad way and say, oh, like, you know, it's it's an old car, they haven't updated it, but I think that's a really good thing. You just have to change the perspective you look at it from. So if you look at it from a perspective of saying, oh, it's an old car, well, you know, you're not gonna like it too much. But if you look at it from the perspective of saying, well, look, you're getting an older car and you're able to buy a brand new, and you really can't do that as often now with all these new cars coming out with all this new tech and you just it's really hard to find those types of cars nowadays so it's really a rare gem especially nowadays to have a car like this so I think it's really interesting but I do think Toyota will probably end up refreshing this car maybe what do you think like 2022 yeah maybe 2022 2023 yeah which is it, it's good it, it kind of needs that update it, in 2022 they're supposed to have a twin turbo 3.3 v6 and really? an eight speed automatic that so, would be a really interesting car yeah it's supposedly it's supposed to have 400 horsepower now 400 horsepower with i would assume probably they you know adjust the suspension and make it you know feel a lot better that'd be a really fun daily oh yeah for sure it this is a fun daily as it is, but I couldn't imagine what it'd be like with 400 horsepower. Exactly. And you know, that's really the beauty of this car is that it does a lot of things. So it's not the best in every single category, but it definitely does a good job at most things. So if you want a cool daily driver, it's cool. Yeah, it doesn't get the best gas mileage, but whatever, you know, you, honestly, when you're driving a car like this with this much presence, that doesn't even matter. Yeah. And then if you want to take it on the weekend and go for some trails or just some, you know, camping or hiking, you can literally use this car for that because it's just gonna take the trails like a champ I mean it's a it's a big car too so obviously just for that reason it's gonna do well off-road but it's just cool that it does so well on the street and so well on the trails it's just a really interesting ride and that's why it's such a big presence in the off-road community too like you can go you can take it to work take it home and then you can load up all your kids and stuff and like there there's even People make tents for the roof of this, and oh, yeah. they'll they'll take it on like week long trips, just driving through the middle of the woods, yeah. which is which sounds fun. I've I've, been, I've honestly considered getting a 
getting a roof, a tent for this. Yeah, but I mean, with the roof rack, it just looks cool, and then putting a tent on the top, that's just even cooler. It is. I mean, it it, it would make a big car even bigger. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm all for that. It looks menacing as it is. I want to make it even more menacing. It's the ultimate daily if you don't care about gas mileage. That's, yeah. that's my big thing with it. So, to kind of, wait, is that an 8.6? That is an 8.6. <gasps> Yo! <laughs> it looks like And yours. it's my color. Oh, and he's, you've got an exhaust. Overall though, I think it's an absolute amazing daily and really the only drawback that I can find is the bad gas mileage. And really, when you enjoy a car enough, it really isn't that bad. So just having a good all around daily that can do everything this car is good at. So driving on the street, on the trails, just being a regular daily driver, you know, it's got a lot of storage. It's a really good car and I think everyone would enjoy it. But for now, if you enjoyed the video and want to see many more just like it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.